Hi all, welcome to week four of our Phoebe Backpack Sew Along. This is when we'll do all of our final construction and finish it up. This is my tester one, so you can see it one more time. We'll be putting all the pieces together today. The original version I wanted to show you has the gusset this large, and the one that I'm doing for this Sew Along is a little bit larger. So I'll show you that difference when we're all finished. This one I expanded it by an inch. So the first thing we want to do is unzip our main zipper here. And I like to do that just so it kind of collapses a little bit easier. And we're going to take our lining piece that has the zipper in it. So we did one of the lining and one of the back panel. And unzip this zipper because we'll be turning through this zipper. And we'll crush the gusset down and then we'll attach the lining to where we've already sewn on the same side of the zipper. All right, so I'm going to pin this. I'll be right back. We have this all pinned up now and you'll sew along the line that you previously did. So I pinned it on back here, flip it over and you'll sew along the same line. So you'll want to go right on the line, but if you can't hit it exactly, you'll want to go in a little bit toward the bag. That way this line doesn't show. that zipper mine's a little bumpy there <clears throat> so make sure it lays nicely for you and then watch your thickness on this part because it's even thicker now turned it over because I had a zipper right there and I was trying to keep my seam allowance with that zipper so I'm trying to manipulate that. It's always going to be there no matter you know where you start with them. idea to sew this pocket with a little bit deeper seam allowance and then trim it so that it's not in your seam allowance here. So now on this part we'll flip it over, reach inside your pocket and turn the bag through the hole. So now we got it turned, this is what it looks like. And I'll just top stitch. So start on one side and top stitch just this top part here. And if you can't get all the way down there, that's okay. Just get as far down as you can. It is a bit cramped in there.
you got that all top stitched, you can zip your main zipper back up again now. The next part is to grab your strap connectors. We're going to make those. And I've done one here for you already to see what it looks like. So what you'll do is take your piece and fold it long ways or hot dog style. And then put those toward the middle. Your long ends in toward the middle, much like we do straps. And then you'll take your short ends and fold those in and have them meet each other. So they'll meet each other. There we go. You can see here in the middle. All right, and so we'll have a D ring we'll grab and put on one of the ends like that. Now, sometimes these sides flare out a little bit. Make sure to kind of fold them in so that they don't flare out. You want them to be nice when you put them on your backpack. So then we'll go ahead and grab that back main panel that has your zipper in it that we did last time. And your pattern piece has your strap connection placement. So I usually just lay this down and then lay my strap connector on top and then tug that out. <laughs> and what we're going to do is top stitch along this strap connector, just make a rectangle. Maybe a good idea to put on your zipper foot for this part, if you can get closer to the D-ring that way. But you do want to back stitch a couple of times. and you'll repeat the process for the other side. The next part we want to do is to grab your two interior slip pockets and we'll place those right sides together. And we'll sew these at a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around except we'll leave a quarter inch gap. And I've done my pocket a little bit bigger. I've done mine six by six. So it's a square. The inside one here is a little bit smaller. Well, maybe I didn't increase it actually. I think I left it the same in that case. So on any of the sides, um, do a three inch hole. So I'm gonna start kind of right here and then I'll leave my three inch gap and go in on the other side. And you do want to backstitch because you'll have to turn through that hole. So mine is a little bit bigger. It calls for six by six. And then we'll trim these corners. I always need a lot of stuff in my backpack, so I add pockets anywhere I can. Trim the corners so it turns nicely. Okay, and then we'll turn it through that hole, of course.
Now on the top, so my turning hole is down here, on the top I'll top stitch along the top and make sure it's nice and flat first. And then I like to do two top stitching lines on this part. I don't know why. I just think it looks nice. So I'm going to do a quarter inch and then maybe a three eighths inch. one piece left and we'll center it, center our pocket, and I'm going to kind of tuck in that hole a little bit because we'll top stitch it on there. So center it and then we'll go around to the two sides and the bottom top stitching. Make sure to back stitch when you start and stop so your pocket's on there really well. double-sided tape if you're worried about it slipping, but it usually does okay. Make sure that turning hole looks nice before you top stitch over it. the interior pocket installed, we'll grab our back pocket and unzip the zipper. And we'll also need the exterior that we just made. And then we'll turn this part inside out. So flip your gusset up like so. Now I'm doing the method without binding. If you're doing the one with binding, if you have vinyl or something, then you'll follow a different method. I can't obviously do both here. So to finish with binding, you would follow steps 37 through 39. I'm going to be doing the without binding, which is steps 34 through 36. And then we'll do the straps the same. So I've marked the middle on my outside here. And I'll match that up with the middle on my gusset. And then the same with the bottom. And then we'll pin all around. So I'll be back while I do that. We have this all pinned on, so I'm going to sew it. Make sure you have your pocket open. Make sure that it's unzipped before you sew it, otherwise you won't be able to turn it. But I'm going to sew it right side down like this because this part was a little bit longer when I was pinning, so it will help ease it in a little bit better. And we'll do this one at half an inch seam allowance. I know we've been doing shorter seam allowances quite a bit here, but this one's half an inch. If you need to clip the corners a little bit to help ease them in, that might help too. It's just kind of a challenging step to get it right, I've found. So I'm going to try and keep it all even up here.
all sewn on. So now we'll flip our bag over. So we have this zipper and I'm going to unzip the zipper and we'll take the panel that we made with the pocket and put it face down and we'll be matching. So reach around your gusset to this back seam that we just sewed and we'll be putting these two together and we'll do the same thing we did before where we flip it over and follow our previous stitching. So find your middles and then pin it all up and we'll sew around again. We'll be right back. All right, we got our big pillow made. This is really big now. So we'll sew from this side up again and it'll be half an inch around. So try and stay on your previous stitching just like we did before. If you can't, then go inward just slightly. And this is the thickest it's going to be. So take your time and make sure your machine makes good stitches. Otherwise your bag won't hold together. Sometimes when it's so thick, it'll skip stitches. And it's hard with all that stuff in the middle when you're trying to go around. have the straps left and I will mention that I've used webbing for my straps so if you've done fabric webbing you might want to consult your instructions if you don't know how to make it into a strap you'll do much like we did the strap connector folding it to the middle and then folding in the sides and for the strap you'll sew down each side we didn't for the strap connector of course um, but you will for the straps. There's so many pretty webbings out there on the market now. It's, it's a good option so that you don't have to make your own. I say that and then of course I chose a black one. <laughs> So now that we have everything put together, you'll reach inside that zipper and pull the whole bag out through that zipper. We got it turned now, and the one step we want to do is take our pockets and fold in the sides, oh, about a quarter inch, and then we'll a couple of pins on here. I usually fold down each end and then do the middle because it kind of falls into place. And we'll just be top stitching this closed. We'll have to do this for both of our pockets, so make sure you do both. And then we'll do the strap and we'll be done. So we are almost there. So I just top stitch this usually about an eighth of an inch. You're just closing the hole. You don't want to make too much of a pucker at the bottom of your bag. Bottom of your pocket, rather. That. So do that for both of your interior pockets. And then 
we'll do our strap. So grab your straps, and as I said, I've used webbing here. To do the strap, grab your webbing or your strap that you've made, and we'll insert one end around the middle bar of your slider. And you can fold it over if you want, or however you want it to look. And then we'll sew across this a couple of times. I like to do a couple lines of it. I think it looks nice, but sometimes it's hard to get the machine in there. take one of our um, swivel clips and put on the strap and then take the end and go up and down on your slider. So now you have a swivel clip and I have a twisted strap so don't look, do like I did. Make sure your strap isn't twisted. Now you have a swivel clip here and your slider. So this will go on the bottom of the bag and then you'll have your slider and then we'll attach another swivel clip at the top that will attach to the D-rings at the top. So slide a slider on and then I'm going to fold it down and then down again just to kind of cover that end a little bit. And we'll do the same thing, go back and forth a couple of times. on the top D ring and pull the other one down and clip here on the bottom D ring. So obviously you want to do that again for the other side, but otherwise you have completed your Phoebe backpack. And I'll show you the gusset on this one. So it's a little bit wider. Um, we'll store quite a bit of stuff in there. So I'm pretty excited about this. I hope you all enjoyed the Phoebe backpack so along. I hope you had a great year of doing all the Sincerely Jen patterns with us. If you'd like to refer to any of them, they'll stay on the channel. Next year we are going to do Lynn's handmade designs, go through her patterns um, one a month, just like we did for Sincerely Jen. So I'll see you all next year in January. Bye everyone!